through this lecture, makukuha na rin natin yung mga area ng mga very weird na mga regions. No? Mga regions formed using parabolas, using sine cosine waves, or mga curves ng mga polynomials. Ganyan. So makita natin yan sa video na ito. So, recall ko lang very quick before we start with the actual regions. Recall natin yung ating definite integral. Yung nakukuha nating sagot sa pag-solve ng isang definite integral ay actually a particular value. So, some real number yung nakukuha natin kapag sinasolve natin ito. And at that time, parang wala pong relevance yung value na yun. But actually, that value in this case, okay, sa lecture na to, it can represent a particular area of some particular region. And actually, ito ay na-discuss na rin. So, recap ko lang rin yung discussion niya para makita natin yung essence. So, say for example, this is our curve, y equals f of x. And our goal is to get the area of the region under this curve. Paano siya discuss before? Well, Pwede nating i-subdivide yung side ng ating region dito into smaller mini intervals and then form the rectangle such that yung gitna ng rectangle natin ay tumatama dun sa curve dito sa taas. Sa case na to, sa ating figure, we see here that we formed three rectangles. So getting the sum of these areas right here, a sub 1 hanggang a sub 3, that sum actually approximates the shaded region that we want. No? Yung area ng shaded region na ito. Although, that approximation it is not so nice na approximation. So, yun yung relevance ng ating definite integral. No? It forms infinitely many rectangles under the curve so that yung sum ng mga areas ng infinitely many rectangles na yun ay precisely equal na dun sa area ng shaded region na ito. But, uh, aminin ko, yung explanation na yun, very technical and it's a lot to take in, it's a lot to handle. So actually, yung purpose rin ng lecture na ito ay tuturuan ko kayo ng even simpler pa na way of setting up your definite integral just via looking at the region, okay? Uh, without having to think about rectangles anymore. <laughs> okay, so let's start. The first case na area na gusto natin ay yung area under a curve. So, I will lay out ingredients here and then after this, papakita natin yung formula na gagamitin nyo to set up the integral uh, having these ingredients no, as part of the region. Here, say we have a curve. So, that's the first ingredient that we have here, first part ng ating region. We have a curve, y equals f of x, where take note, ang f natin ay positive. Pag sinabing positive, it is above the x-axis. And then continuous, ibig sabihin walang jumps, walang hati, walang pulse ang ating function. Tuloy-tuloy lang siya. Pero sabi dito, it is required at the very least, continuous lang siya dun sa interval na to na A to B. Okay. So ano ba yung A to B na yan? Wala pa siya sa curve. The second and third ingredient, yung second and third part ng ating region ay yung line x equals a. So that's the second. And the third is the line x equals b. So doon ang pumapasok actually yung interval natin na a, b. And the last one, the fourth and last uh, ingredient ng ating uh, figure ay yung ating um, x-axis. So given yung mga ingredients na yun, it turns out na yung area of the region having these ingredients, these parts, as parang sides ng region natin, is just given by, eto, precisely this one, a friend that we've seen now already. The definite integral having bounds A to B, so limits of integration A to B, are integrand is F of X dx. So if we analyze our region right here, Okay. Yung region natin ay bounded above by your positive continuous curve, y equals f of x. Bounded siya sa left by the line x equals a. 
bounded siya sa right by the line x equals b and bounded siya below by the x-axis. And then, connect ko lang yung aking region dito sa ating formula. Your integrand f of x is the bound above. Your limits of integration are the x-coordinates of the bounds ng region sa left and sa right. If nakakalito, kasi mamaya nakakalito talaga siya sa mga regions natin, uh, what you can do is maybe try projecting your region onto the x-axis. Yung shadow na form na nafo-form niya na interval ay precisely yung limits of integration na ilalagay niyo dito. Where, take note, wag ipagpapalit, yung lower limit of integration corresponds dun sa left most endpoint nung interval, nung, nung region. And the upper limit of integration corresponds to the rightmost endpoint of your region. So, ito lang. Alalahanin lamang po ang formula na ito. Okay? Now, let's have some examples to demonstrate that formula. So, let's consider this region, okay, bounded by the lines y equals x x equals 3 and the x-axis as shown. This red line right here is your y equals x. I'll write that down. y equals x. Okay. Your blue line right here is your x equals 3. And of course, this axis right here, the horizontal axis here is your x-axis. Ganina, meron tayong 4 na ingredients. No? Four parts dun sa ating discussion. The first one is a curve. A curve y equals f of x na continuous and positive on some interval. Yung curve na ito is yung parang bound sa taas. Sana na-realize na siya ay actually your y equals x. Siya yung nasa taas. No? And then, y equals x being a line ay dapat alam na rin natin na siya ay continuous everywhere. No? Pero in particular, so determine na rin natin in the process, ano yung particular na interval na gusto nating continuous siya. Yung bounds ng ating region sa left and sa right, ay try natin uh, tignan. Sige, yung sa right siguro yung mas kita kasi triangle to na right. Right triangle siya. And yung bound niya sa right ay, well, yung x equals 3. Ngayon, uh, ano yung bound sa left? No, hindi siya ganun ka outright. But again, my tip for you kanina was, kung hindi ganun ka outright, maybe try projecting your region down to the x-axis. And then yung shadow na nafo-form sa x-axis na interval, yun yung uh, precise A and B na bound sa left and sa right ng region natin. And kapag pinaba natin, pinoject natin ang region na ito onto our x-axis, yung left na endpoint niya actually ay ito right here, yung zero. And then, uh, yung fourth na part ng ating figure, uh, ng ating region, ay yung x-axis. Na nakalagay naman dito, uh, x-axis yung uh, bound below. Yeah, and again, reiterate ko ulit, our y equals x as a line is actually continuous everywhere. But in particular, our interval of interest is only yung interval na concerning the bounds na nasa left na nasa right. So, yeah, is sabihin natin yun na in particular, our y equals x is continuous on 0, 3. And here, our y equals x, Okay, kanina ang sabi ko, pag positive above the x-axis. So if you look at your uh, y equals x here, it is above the x-axis on 0, 3. Alright, so we've satisfied the requirements dun sa ating formula. Let us set up the area and it is precisely given by this one right here. The lower limit of integration is from the left bound of our region na again, in-establish natin to be x equals 0, kaya yan naging 0. Okay. The upper limit of integration 3 corresponds to the rightmost bound of our region na sinabi natin kanina to be x equals 3, kaya yan naging 3. So x yung nilagay niya dito as integrand again because it is your curve here which is actually your uh, bound above ng region natin. And then of course, attach the dx. 
okay, so na-set up na natin ang integral and then yung way ng pag-solve nito ay dapat expert na expert na kayo. Ang integral nito ay x squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 3. And evaluating that, you get 9 halves. And confirm din natin, ang area ng isang triangle is given by 1 half of the base times the height. And that's a height of 3. The base is 3. So inputting that here in our formula for the area of a triangle, indeed what we get is 9 halves. So na-confirm naman na kahit formula for the area ng triangle or integration ang gamitin natin, uh, 9 halves pa rin ang nakukuha. So let's proceed to this illustration. So here we want to find the area of the region bounded by y equals negative x squared plus 4. The lines x equals negative 1 and x equals 1 and the x-axis. Number one step is to draw. Draw your region first. Yan ang ating region. Your y equals negative x squared plus 4 is the parabola. So that is the red parabola right here. The line x equals negative 1 is the blue line right here na nasa left. The line x equals 1 is the blue line right here na nasa right. And of course, the x-axis is your horizontal axis. And we are interested dun sa region okay, na having those as bound. So let's go back to our formula na dinuscuss natin. We have four parts there again. The first one is the curve na bound ng region sa taas. And if you look at this curve right here, the bound or yung cover niya sa taas ay yung parabola. No? which is given by this equation. So, yeah, note ko na continuous everywhere ang ating parabola. But again, at the very least, ang kailangan lang natin ay continuous siya dun sa particular interval na gusto, gusto natin kuhana ng area of. Okay? So, let's see ano yung part number 2 and part number 3 natin dito. Part number 2 is the bound sa left ng ating region. Uh, my other tip for you is to try projecting the region onto your x-axis. And if you project this region onto the x-axis pa baba, the left end point, alright, is at negative 1. So yun yung part number 2 natin. Okay? Negative 1 yung left end point. The right end point would be yung x equals 1. Okay? And then, sasabihin na lang natin na yung parabola being continuous everywhere, in particular, siya ay continuous on yung interval of consideration natin, interval of concern, which is negative 1, 2, 1. Alright. And then, uh, yung last, second and last na property na kailangan sinasatisfy ng ating y equals f of x is that it is positive. No? And in this interval naman, at negative 1 to 1, positive ang ating parabola. No? It is above the x-axis on that interval. So, safe naman tayo dyan. And yeah, uh, banggitin ko lang our fourth part in our discussion kanina was the x-axis. And ito naman siya, yun yung bound sa baba. Ayun, so all the parts, okay, all the properties satisfied, we can therefore set up our integral already. So, yung area ng region na ito, Okay, yung shaded region, formulate natin. Yung integral muna tayo. Again, the lower limit of integration of our integral corresponds to the leftmost bound of our region. In this case, that is x equals negative 1. Your upper limit of integration corresponds to the rightmost endpoint or rightmost bound of your region. And that is 1. Kaya naging 1 yan. The integrand, okay, corresponds to f of x, yung bound sa taas ng ating region. Sa case na to, yung parabola. So, si negative x squared plus 4 ang ilalagay natin dyan. That is precisely your integrand and then, of course, attach the dx. Okay. So, ito na yung ating integral na set up na natin successfully. And then, expert na expert na, integrate na natin ito. Ayan, ang ating um, sagot na nung integrate na natin siya. Here, evaluated from negative 1 to 1. And then, yeah, pinakita yung solution. And ito yung final answer natin. 22 over 3. So, yan pala yung area nung uh, region dito. Okay, so yun lang yung examples natin for the first case. Again, our first case is on the area under a curve. I-extend natin itong idea na to in areas between two curves. Paano yun? Kaya-kaya naman yun. May extend lamang yung definition. So, ulitin ko lang, again, ito yung tinuro 
sa atin and we learned okay, na yung area under the curve y equals f of x is given by this definite integral. And then we can extend this definition sa area between two curves. So ito na yung itsura. Wow! So wala na yung x-axis. Goodbye na tayo kay x-axis. In general, pwedeng any curve na y equals g of x yung bound nyo below. Okay? Analyze ulit natin yung parts muna siguro ng region natin like before. The first part of our region here is y equals f of x. Again, that is your bound sa taas. The bound above of your region where we require it again to be continuous. At the very least, only on the interval a, b. Sige, uh, para consistent, gagawin kong second part yung line x equals a. Ganun pa rin. Si x equals a ay yung left na, uh, leftmost bound of our region. Next, yung third part, I see x equals b, line x equals b, that corresponds to the rightmost bound of our region. And then, ito na, mag-iiba na. Yung fourth part, goodbye na tayo kay x-axis, yung fourth part or fourth ingredient natin, I see y equals g of x na this time. Where yung g of x can stand for any equation in x. Pwedeng parabola, pwedeng line, pwedeng sine, cosine, ganon. So kahit ano, na... Kailangan si satisfy rin na continuous siya on the interval of consideration nga natin kung saan natin gustong kuhanan ng uh, area yung region. Okay, and then take note, you want f of x to be greater than g of x for all x in a, b. Really, yung ibig sabihin lang nito, nasa taas ni g of x si f of x. <laughs> so, bound above natin si f of x and then bound below natin si g. And then, what we want to consider is the region bounded by these four parts, no? And it turns out it is equal to this one right here. It is the integral from a to b, f of x minus g of x, dx. Kaya natin na i-fall yung first case under this more general case. How? Well, take lang natin si g of x to be equal to 0. So itong y equals 0 actually corresponds to, well, the x-axis. Kanina, apart from f of x being continuous, we wanted it to be positive, okay, if you recall. Eh, kapag pinalitan nga natin tong g of x to be 0, uh, ano yung sinasabi ng ating equation? Well, si f ay dapat positive for all x in a, b. Pareho lang sila talaga. Now, banggitin ko lang rin na equal tong formula na ito dito sa ating nasa right. No? Dinistribute ko lang yung integral. This is precisely the area under the curve f on the interval x equals a and x equals b. Yung area ng shaded region na ito, yung very dark. Ang area of interest natin ay ito lamang. No? So, we have to remove yung chunk na ito. Yung area below g of x. And it is precisely equal to integral from a to b na g of x dx. So, consistent naman yung ating mga definitions, no? Ayun! Let's go to the first example. Example 2 na to mula dun sa example 1 natin. Here, we want to find the area of the region bounded by y equals 2 minus x squared and y equals um, x. So, let's draw that. And we have this right here. Um, so, dito actually, nung drino natin, nakita natin na hindi na technically kailangan sabihin pa explicitly yung bound sa left saka bound sa right. Kasi, na-close na agad yung region natin mula pa lang sa pag-graph nitong dalawang graphs na ito. Mula sa dalawang equations na ito. I mean, unlike this one, kung walang x equals a at saka walang x equals b, magiging infinite yung area na nasa gitna nilang dalawa. Pero itong mga examples na to yung actually medyo mas difficult kasi tayo yung magdedetermine ng bound sa left at bound sa right. So sige, proceed tayo. Let's lay out our parts first, like I, how I did it before. No? Uh, yung part number one natin is the bound above. Okay? So in this case, that is the red parabola right here. 
yung bottom below here, it's the blue line na y equals x. And then, let's just confirm your red parabola here being a parabola is continuous everywhere. At the same time, y equals x being a line is continuous also everywhere. So, kahit ano pang interval na i-consider natin, continuous din siya doon. Eh, again, recall, dalawang properties yan na kailangan natin sinecheck kay f siya kay g. Ni-require lang natin yun para walang holes yung ating region. Okay. Uh, and dito, consistent naman na yung f of x natin, which is the parabola, okay, is greater, nasa taas siya, ng ating y equals x na curve right here. Yeah, so the, the, the next goal now is to look for the x equals a and the x equals b na bound sa left and bound sa right. Try projecting the region onto the x-axis. Okay, so try ko kayong i-guide. Pag squeeze natin siya, sana mag-agree po na yung portion ng x-axis na masyasyado ay mula dito sa negative 2 hanggang kay 1. So, in fact, our interval AB na gusto natin kunin ay mula sa negative 2. So, this is our x equals A, x equals negative 2. And then, our x equals B is, well, 1. So, nilayout ko lang yung mga properties na yun. Banggitin ko lang sila here ulit. Continuous both yung ating f of x and yung ating g of x everywhere. Yung left endpoint ay si negative 2 pag squeeze natin siya. Yung kabila naman ay si x equals 1. One. And so therefore, in particular, continuous yung ating dalawang functions dun sa interval na gusto lang nating uh, i-consider. So yung uh, interval na ito, negative 2 to 1. And then, take note, yung red na parabola, which is 2 minus x squared, is greater than our blue na line. Take note only on this interval right here, no? on negative 2, 1. Ayun, so all conditions satisfied. We've also considered already the four parts. So, yung area natin, setting that up, is equal to the integral from negative 2 to 1, leftmost endpoint of the region, rightmost endpoint of the region. And then, your integrand is f of x minus g of x. So, ang f of x natin dito, the bound above is your parabola, 2 minus x squared, okay, Minus g of x. g of x being yung bound below. That is y equals x. And then insert dx right here. So, diretso ko na siya agad. Okay, solving for the definite integral, what you have is 9 halves. So, it turns out that this region right here, the area of that shaded region is 9 halves square units. Now, uh, may inanote lang ako tungkol dun sa limits of integration natin. So, dito nahanap natin siya no, to be negative 2, 1. The way that I discussed it to you is to look at the leftmost and the rightmost bounds of our region. Um, another tip that I gave okay, is to project it, okay, squeeze it onto the x-axis and kung ano yung shadow na nafo-form, then yun yung magiging interval natin for the limits of integration. Um, there are times kasi when uh, hindi ganun ka outright, hindi ganun ka explicit yung mga uh, tatamaan niyang points sa x-axis. I want you to note na yung limits of integration A and B natin, A being the lower limit of integration, B being the upper limit of integration, yun yung x-coordinates of the leftmost and the rightmost points of intersection of the two curves. So, pwede natin siyang mahanap, okay, via the points of intersection of those two curves. Maybe let's try uh, parang this third dip na ito, okay, and confirm natin na indeed, negative 2, 1 yung uh, x coordinates nung mga points of intersection natin. So, here from the graph, our points of intersection will be located here precisely and here. No? Uh, hanapin natin, okay? Kung x-coordinates ang gusto natin sa ka points of intersection, dalawang steps ang gagawin natin para mahanap yan. Yung una is to equate the two functions and then very simple, just solve for x. And then yung mga x na makukuha ninyo ay precisely the, well, x-coordinates of the points of intersection and they will consequently be the limits of integration ninyo. So, ayun. So, dito, inequate yung x at yung 2 minus x squared. And then, this one, lipat lang natin sa isang side, lahat ng mga terms, and then leave 
uh, zero. So, naka zero out lang yung right hand side. Uh, and then, solve natin ito. Now, to solve for this, we factor this out. Okay? Ito ang factors niya. If you have these two factors multiplied and then equal to zero, you just equate to zero each factor right here. And so, consequently, what you will get is x equals negative 2 para dun sa x plus 2 equals 0. And para dun sa x minus 1 equals 0, what you get is 1. And indeed, ito yung mga limits of integration na nakuha natin kanina. No? Yung a natin ay si negative 2, yung b natin ay si 1. So indeed, tama naman na it turns out, ah, x coordinates rin pala siya nung points of intersection. Now, uh, yun nga, as I said, x coordinates yung kailangan nyo lang at the very least. But for completion, para sa figure na ito, uh, sinolve na rin niya yung y coordinate. And so, yung mismong points of intersection yung sinolve. Um, how do you do that if you want to be extra like that? <laughs> Paano hanapin yung y coordinate? Substitute nyo lang yung mga x coordinates na to to either one of these two equations. Uh, pareho lang yung makukuha yung value regardless kung alin yung piliin Nyo. Pero of course, pilihan niya yung mas simple no, na equation. In this case, y equals x na lang. And so, the first point of intersection right here is negative 2, negative 2. Yan yung nandito. And kapag x mo ay 1, your y is also 1. So, your second point of intersection is 1, 1. Indeed, the x-coordinates of these points of intersection will be our bounds for the integral. No? Yung limits of integration natin. So, indeed, ito yung ating area. And indeed, 9 halves siya kapag sinolod natin yung definite integral. Alright, so let's proceed to the next example. Example 3 here. You have two curves, y equals sine x and y equals cosine x. Mga trigonometric functions na nakagraph na dito. So ito siya, your blue curve right here is your y equals sine x and your red curve right here is your y equals cosine x. Okay, and then yun. Gusto lang nating makuha yung area no shaded region na ito. Parang kanina, let's lay out our four parts. Okay? The first one is the function y equals f of x, which is the function above. Yung uh, bound above ng ating region. Uh, in this case, actually, that is your y equals sine x. Okay? Uh, yeah, so that's your y equals f of x. Your next na part, manahin ko si g of x. Si y equals g of x is your function that is below. Okay? That is your red curve right here given by y equals cosine x. Okay. Now, um, yun yung medyo mahirap na part. Hindi out right nakikita kung ano yung bound sa left and bound sa right ng ating region. Ito yung magiging left end point. It's a point right here somewhere. And the right end point will be right here somewhere there. No? Kaso, hindi ganun ka explicit yung mga x coordinates ng mga yan. Okay, so actually dito papasok yung diniscuss natin dun sa previous slide na kailangan natin mahanap yung points of intersection ng ating dalawang curves and the x-coordinates of these points of intersection correspond to yung mga x-coordinate nila dito dun sa shadow nila onto the x-axis pag project natin yung region. By the way, I won't write it explicitly anymore but these curves being trigonometric functions as we know ay continuous everywhere so that they will be continuous on whatever interval of consideration. Okay? At the same time, yung property na ang f of x ay greater than g of x, actually tayo na yung nag for force na mangyari yun kasi anyway tayo naman yung nag assign which one yung f and which one yung g. Dito, yung f natin ay si sine x. Yung g natin ay si cosine. Bakit? Kasi sa region, yung nasa taas ay si sine. Yung nasa baba ay si cosine. Just take note at the back of your minds na kailangan yung dalawang properties na yun para mag-work yung formula. But you don't have to write it down anymore. So anyway, going back, let us look for the points of intersection of the two curves here. So equating the two curves, we get this. Sine x equals cosine x. Alright, dapat naaalala sa math 17, okay, kung paano sinasolve ito. This is uh, an equation involving trigonometric functions. So dapat naaalala paano isolve. Maybe what we can do is to divide both sides by cosine. 
Okay? Dividing both sides by cosine, you have here for your left-hand side, sine x over cosine x. And on your right-hand side, 1. Kasi makakancel yung cosine over cosine. Ang sine x over cosine x ay tangent x lamang. So therefore, this equation translates to tangent x equals 1. Let's take the tangent inverse of both sides. In that case, what we get is x equals tangent inverse of 1. So, pi over 4 actually um, uh, first na angle natin. And this is, uh, take note, consistent dun sa leftmost endpoint that we want. Because take note here, what you want is an angle or a value that is between 0 and pi over 2. And indeed, si pi over 4 ay nasa gitna ng 0 and pi over 2 yan. So, yung second one ay yung rightmost na bound dito. Okay, you have it here. Uh, so, ang um, gusto natin ng angle ay yung nasa gitna ng pi at ng 3 pi over 2. Kung saan ang value ng tangent ay 1. So, anong angle yun? Yun ay 5 pi over 4. Alright? And ito rin precisely yung mga limits of integration natin. Yes, yung line na ito ay corresponding to x equals pi over 4 and this dashed line right here is x equals 5 pi over 4. Ayun, so these are your x coordinates. For completion, hanapin nyo natin yung y coordinates. Hindi naman siya super kailangan kasi hindi naman natin siya gagamitin sa integral. Pero just for completion, let's solve for the y coordinate also. And if you substitute pi over 4 to sine or to cosine, what you get is square root of 2 over 2. So your first point of intersection is pi over 4 square root of 2 over 2. And then, for the second one, you substitute 5 pi over 4 into any one of these two curves. So, negative square root of 2 over 2. So, ayun. So, anyway, these are your points of intersection. We've laid out all our parts already sa integral. So, pwede na natin iset up ang ating integral. No? So, our area here, following from the formula, is the integral from... Our lower limit of integration is the leftmost bound of our region. And that is x-coordinate ang gagamitin si pi over 4. Huwag kayo malilito ha. Huwag niyo take yung negative square root of 2 over 2. Ang gusto niyo yung projection sa x. Kaya x-coordinate ang kukunin ninyo. Your upper limit is the rightmost bound of your region. And in this case, that is 5 pi over 4. Yun yung upper limit natin dito. The integrand from our formula is f of x minus g of x. f of x being the upper curve or the curve above. And then the g of x is the lower curve or yung bound below. So above minus below tayo, yung f of x ang mismo na name niya na naka-x. So yung sine x lamang. And then minus the curve below, so that's cosine. And so your integral is this one, sine x minus cosine x. And then of course, attach your dx. So yan, na-set up na si integral. Okay? I-integrate na lang natin ang definite integral natin. The integral of sine, if you remember, is negative cosine x. Okay, formula natin yan sa integration. And then minus, nag-distribute lamang ang integral over a difference. The integral of cosine, if you recall, is sine x. So, ito yung magiging sagot natin. Definite integral. So, evaluated from pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4 tayo. And if you would evaluate that, you get 2 square root of 2. Next tayo. Okay, sabi dito set up at naka bold face. Pag sinabing set up, makakahinga kayo ng maluwag. Bakit? Kasi pag sinabing set up, i sa set up, nyo lang yung integral. Isusulat nyo lang yung parang pinaka-form ng integral and then no need to solve for the definite integral anymore. Pero kapag nakalagay na find, ayan o, find the area. Kapag find, ibig sabihin, hanapin nyo pa yung pinaka-value niya. Pero dito set up, so at least set up lang ng integral. Okay. Pero dito medyo mas difficult siya kasi there are three curves involved actually. Wow. Paano kaya yun? Three curves involved. F of x and g of x lang tayo. Hmm, let's see. So again, first step, kapag ganito, draw the region first. Graphing these, you have this one. Okay? So your red one here is your parabola. Okay? Your orange graph here, orange line, is your y equals negative 7x. Okay? Your blue na curve here, half parabola, opening upwards, tapos yung right branch lang. And then, yes, uh, after you've graphed the curves, makikita nyo na rin yung region having those curves as bounds. 
So, kaya ako merong uh, guide dito na meron akong dashed lines here. Okay? Kasi yan yung uh, parang bounds natin sa left and sa right. Where dito, by the way, hindi explicitly naka-right yung um, values nila. Pero nakikita kasi medyo maganda yung graph natin dito. Your leftmost bound is x equals negative 1. Your rightmost bound is x equals 2. Maybe for completion, let's look for the points of intersection of our curves. So, kayo na lang bahala mag-solve dito. Okay, hindi ko napapakita explicitly kung paano. But really, you just equate the two curves and then solve for x. Uh, if you want for completion, you can also solve for y. Here, so yung y equals negative 7x, yung ating orange na uh, line, intersects your parabola here, y equals negative x squared plus 8, sa point na negative 1, 7. That's your point of intersection. Meanwhile, the line and the half parabola intersects at 0, 0 here on the origin. Okay? Um, and then, Yung ating parabola, y equals negative x squared plus 8, and the half parabola, uh, x equals square root of y, intersects at 2, 4. Okay? Yung leftmost na bound ng ating region ay negative 1 nga naman. Ayan, complete ko na siya. Negative 1. And then yung rightmost bound ng ating region ay 2. So tama naman. Ngayon, if we analyze the region here, hindi consistent yung curve below, actually. Yung curve above, consistent na yung parabola lang rin siya. Pero below, you have two curves here. Eh. Your line here, para dun sa portion na nasa left ng y-axis. Tapos para dun sa right ng y-axis, yung half parabola na yung curve below. Parang hindi consistent kung one full region yung i-consider natin. Sa particular example na to, we will divide our region into two. So that for each region, consistent kung ano yung upper na curve and kung ano yung lower na curve. And we can use the formula that we learned. So dito, we have to divide. How do we divide the region here? Well, so ito siya, basically. Okay? For this part na nakaiwan yung shade, the curve above is your parabola and the curve below is your line, the orange line. Okay? Na dito sa portion na to, consistent pa na yun yung f of x, yun yung g of x. Okay? Now, para dito naman sa right portion ng ating region, your curve above is the parabola. Meanwhile, the curve below is the half parabola. So, like so natin siya dinivide, okay? Kasi doon consistent eh na, okay, yung portion na to, yung line, yung nasa baba. Yung portion na to, yung parabola, half parabola yung nasa baba. Okay? So, we will thus look for the area of each sub-region and to get the one full region, one main region natin, i-add lang natin yung areas nung dalawang sub-region na yun. So, ayun. Sige, so let's do that. Para sa particular na region na to, yung curve above, which is f of x, is your parabola. Yung leftmost na bound ng region na ito, just this shaded one, is your still x equals negative 1. Tapos, your rightmost bound for the region is precisely x equals 0. 0 yung tatamaan niya dito dun sa shadow kapag pinaba natin siya. Okay? And then finally, consistent na ang ating g of x, the curve below, alright, is the line y equals negative 7x. So, ayun. So, alam na natin yung parts. Okay? So, we first construct the integral corresponding to this area right here. And that is the integral from negative 1. Your upper limit of integration is 0. Okay? Your integrand is the parabola here, negative x squared plus 8. Okay? And that's minus, kasi f of x minus g of x tayo, the curve below is your line. That is y equals negative 7x. So, constructing that, we get this one. Alright, so one region down, one subregion down, we just have to look for the area of this other subregion yung nasa right. So, um, if we analyze this time, let's analyze the four parts sa ating uh, region. The curve above, which is y equals f of x, okay? That is your parabola, the red one, it's negative x squared plus 8. The leftmost bound of your region here is your, well, x equals 0, actually. 
And then, your rightmost na bound ng ating region, if you project it downwards, what you get is x equals 2. And then, your last na part, the fourth part, is the curve below. No? Yun yung g of x natin. And the curve below here is your x equals square root of y. Yeah. So, therefore, alam na natin yung four parts. Okay? We construct the integral now. You have here the integral from 0 to 2. Lower limit of integration is the leftmost bound, which is x equals 0. Upper limit of integration is the rightmost bound, which is x equals 2. Now, for the integrand, from our formula, it was f of x minus g of x, where f is the upper curve and g is the lower curve, above minus below. Ang above natin dito is the parabola, so that yung first na isusulat natin ay si negative x squared plus 8. And then, minus, minus, well, itong half parabola na ito, si x equals square root of y. Pero, yung isusulat niya dapat sa integrand ay naka in terms of x dapat. So, actually, dapat naka-isolate yung y and then sa so y equals something in terms of x. E dito, hindi naka-isolate yung y. Yung x yung naka-isolate dito sa equation na to. So, kailangan natin i-transform tong equation na to nang naka-isolate si y. Na kaya naman natin gawin to remove the square root here, let us square both sides of this equation. So, squaring both sides of the equation, what you get is x squared equals y. Yan, na-isolate na natin yung y and it's a function in terms of x now. Itong x squared yung isusulat nyo sa inyong integrand. So, therefore, ang itsura ng integrand ay ganito. Your uh, first function here, f of x, is si negative x squared plus 8. And then minus yung x squared ang nilagay. So, hindi yung square root of y, hindi rin yung x, okay? Yung x squared ang isusulat ninyo. So, make sure that the names of your equations are naka y equals something in terms of x. And yung something in, ter in terms of x, yung isusulat niya sa integral ninyo. Para consistent na puro x lang lahat yung nasa loob ng ating integral. And then, of course, attach your dx. Tapos yun, uh, ito na actually yung final answer kasi again, set up lang siya. <laughs> so, hindi na natin kailangan isolve. Buti naman, ito na yung final answer natin. Alright, so we're done with that example. We proceed to the last and final example for this lecture. Yay! Uh, so here we are to set up the definite integral representing the area of the region having these as bounds, no? these curves. Alright, so the first step again is to graph okay, your curves here. And then kung meron ang form na region mula dun sa mga graph na yun, and the shade na yung region na yun, yun yung area na gusto natin kunin. So, ito yung graph. Okay, again, a half parabola, y equals square root of x, a line y equals x minus 2, and the x-axis. The region having those curves as bounds ay nakashade na dito. Nakaklose na siya. Yeah, if we project it down, okay, yung pinaka-left na bound ng ating region is this one right here, si x equals 0, yun yung left endpoint ng shadow. And then the right endpoint, rightmost endpoint, or rightmost bound of the region is si x equals 4. Alright? But, when it comes to the curves, this is very similar to the example 4. While consistent dun sa region, dun sa one whole region natin, yung upper curve being the parabola here, y equals square root of x, sa curve below, which is your g of x actually, hindi consistent. There is a portion of your region na yung x-axis yung curve below. There's also a portion of your region na yung curve below ay yung line. So, ito na naman. Dahil hindi consistent, kailangan nating i-divide ang ating region into sub-regions kung saan consistent na. Kung upper and lower. Okay? So, pero before we do that, uh, for completion, just like how we did lang yan sa example 4, let us look for the points of intersection of each curve. So, yeah, y equals square root of x tayo here muna, and yung y equals x minus 2. Here, you get 4, 2 as the point of intersection. Next tayo, your line y equals x minus 2 and the x-axis, okay, intersect here at this point, 2, 0. And then, finally, for your curve, uh, for your parabola, y equals square root of x and the x-axis, they intersect at the origin, 0, 0. Um, ayun, so na-determine na natin ang mga points of intersection, and as I said kanina, we have to divide the region into two. From 0 to 2, 
na x coordinates consistent na yung x axis ang um, uh, lower curve niyan okay so actually yun yung magiging first sub region natin and then the other one is from 2 to 4 kasi sa 2 to 4 consistent na ang lower na curve natin ay yung line na na x minus 2 um, so here ito yung dalawang uh, sub regions sa iko consider natin Okay. Uh, for each one, we apply the formula. And then, kung ano yung nakaset up na integral sa kada isa, i-add lang natin para equal siya dun sa one whole main region. So, setting up the integral for this particular region, for this sub-region here, you have your lower limit of integration being 0, that's your left bound. The upper limit of integration being 2, that's your right bound. Okay. And then, yung curve above, that's your f of x, ay may equation na square root of x, yung f of x lang na portion yung kukunin nyo, and then minus g of x, where again, the equation of your x-axis, ayan yung curve natin sa baba, the equation of that is y equals 0, so your g of x here is 0. Okay lang yung na constant na 0, okay lang. So ang magiging ng integrand ay ganito, actually, square root of x minus 0 dx. Consistent na puro x, again, kasi dx tayo, so x natin siya i-integrate. Okay? So, walang mga y dapat na mamimix dyan, ha? And then, um, consistent rin dapat na yung uh, limits of integration natin ay mga x. Kaya sa x-axis natin siya pinoproject. Ayun! And then, doing the same for the other region here, okay? Yung x-coordinate na magiging shadow niya ay mula sa 2 hanggang 4. So, 2 is the left bound. So, that is your lower limit of integration. And then, yung right bound ay si 4. That's your upper limit of integration. Your integrand is f of x minus g of x. f of x being the upper curve of this particular subregion. That is square root of x. Your g of x, k, is iba na, no? Yung line na siya for this particular second subregion. And yung pinaka g of x natin ay yung x minus 2. Yun lang ang kukunin natin, si x minus 2. So therefore, our integrand is this one. Square root of x, f of x, minus g of x, si x minus 2. Ganon. And because set up ito, so medyo na kayo na ng malalim, hanggang set up lang talaga mula sa figure, and this is already your final answer. No need to solve for the definite integral anymore. Alright, so we're done actually. Yun na yung last example. Yung next slide natin ay mga discussion exercises na. So, mag-practice na lang po, okay, para sa iba-ibang mga region marunong tumingin at marunong mag-set up. So, let's just see each other again sa next video. Bye!